All right, Brad, uh, you, sh- I mean, you just shared a bunch of tips and tricks th- that you knew you were sharing. And then there were quite a few that I don't think you knew you were sharing, but I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to take at least one of them and highlight. You said, you know, in between songs, uh, you wanted to not have the vocalist, uh, their voice going through the effects, right? You know, you, when they, when they speak to the crowd, it, it shouldn't have mm-hmm. lots of reverb and it shouldn't be wet. It should be fairly dry. <clears throat> Uh, or maybe entirely dry. But what you said was what hopefully everybody eventually learns is that you muted the sends to the effects. You didn't mute the effects. And the nice part about that is if you mute the effect, the reverb that's sort of lingering from the song gets cut right off. But if you mute the send to the effect, well, then whatever was in there gets to do its thing. And the new stuff just is dry. I, I I know this is table stakes for you, but it is one of those things. It's really important for folks to learn at some point. And if today's that day, amazing. Like, that's a yeah. good day. So I, I, I appreciate you sharing these kinds of things with us because they yeah. they are relevant no matter no matter the size of the room. So, yeah, for sure. For sure. It's a it's a huge difference. And also, I'll say if for whatever reason you miss like the song starts, you're like, crap, I haven't got the effects on. It sounds way better to turn the sends on to the effect than it does to unmute the effect. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and so it's like just a much smoother transition in both directions. Right. Uh, so, yeah, so pretty much the last, pretty much the last scene on every song was mute the vocal effects sends. That's really smart. Yeah, if you're going to do one <laughs> thing for your band... Do that so that in between songs and you could even like trigger that with a with a foot pedal on a lot of mixers. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, if you're if you're trying to mix yourself from the stage or or or, Mm -hmm. you know, some blend of that or if the front of house engineer Mm -hmm. isn't quite as skilled as, say, Brad is, uh, then that, you know, that but it it does make a difference. It makes a huge difference. Yeah, it's it it covers up your mistakes. (laughs) for sure. (laughs) Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. I did tell a few listeners that you were coming on the show and every one of them had like a laundry list of questions. So I, I tried to kind of pull this down into what I, I thought would be the the most interesting for you to talk about and perhaps even helpful for the, the folks listening. Um, and if, if any of these tips come up, you know, it, 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 as an ancillary sort of added bonus, that's, that that's what we're after here for sure. Um, but I, the the question I'll start with is what can a band do on stage to make your job easier? And and I realize that you're mostly doing big rooms and maybe what the band's doing on stage doesn't matter as much as it would in a small room, but I'm sure it matters at some level. So what, what can, what can bands do to make, to, to endear themselves to you, but also to make it so that you can make them sound their best. Mm. Well, I'll say this: like excessive stage volume is a problem. I don't care how big the gig is. That, like, it, it's I, if you're playing from fifty thousand people in a festival and it's just stupid loud on stage, it, it's not so much that it's hitting you or the audience, although that can be a problem. It's getting into all the mics on the stage. Oh, fair. Uh, so it's uh, if I was going to say one thing, it's that be reasonably loud. That doesn't mean silent um i have had i mean i have gone to small gigs here and there and actually asked somebody on the stage to turn their amp up a little bit because i'm standing on the floor in front of the stage in say like a two fifteen hundred seat place yeah and i'm not hearing them and i don't want to just in other words i'd like to have equal amounts of i don't know let's say the bass and this guitar coming out of the PA. Sure. You know, I see. So you not, you like, don't want to have to overcompensate one. Yeah. I got mm-hmm. it. Okay. And I've, I've had that problem where I had, you know, an especially loud guitar player. And, uh, I've had people come up from different parts of the venue. I can't hear the guitar. And it's like, I'm, I can't not hear the guitar. Yeah. Right. You know, right. Well, guitar so, amps are very uh, directional. Yeah. Yeah. It can, it can right. be. Yeah. Yeah. His was for sure. Like, so I think it's just come, you have an acoustic instrument on the stage, the drums, that you just kind of need to go up there and go, okay, can you turn the bass and the guitar or whatever up to a level that is appropriate with the drum level that's coming off the stage. And let's just 
and leave it. And then I'll take care of the rest. Yep. Uh, and um, I mean, that it, I'll almost go so far as to say it, it doesn't even matter what size venue you're playing. It probably matters more for a really small place. Sure. 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 But I mean, it's still a problem. Like if you have a, you know, a guitar amp, I don't want to lean on the guitar players, but it's, it's okay. usually the loudest thing on the stage, right? Or the I, snare I, drum. I, it is guitar, or the snare drum. That's it. it. It, well, and they both live in that frequency range that competes with the vocals too. Yeah, they, they sure can. And, um, which is another subject we can get into, but it, it, if you have the guitar blasting through the, I like using overheads. And if the guitar is just blasting through the overheads, that's a problem, you yeah. know? Uh, so you can play at an appropriate level, which is basically, let's just find a level that kind of meshes with the, what snare is doing yep. or the other ins- instruments coming off the stage are doing. And then, you know, I'll deal with that. Uh, there is such a thing as, I'm sorry, I won't go that far. Not, there is such a thing as too quiet also in relative terms with the other instruments on the stage. Yeah, so, makes sense. There you oh, go. Yeah. Do that. <laughs> yeah, do that. Well, and and one thing you said in there was get it to that level and then I'll take it from there. So is perhaps a follow up to that, you know, kind of the old Ronco thing, set it and forget it. Like are are ch- people who change levels of their instruments on stage an equal headache for you during the gig? Oh, well, for sure. Yeah. I mean, unless it was just, whatever, if it's the last song, fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right, fair. Yeah, sure. Okay. Whatever. Yep. Uh, I do think that once you establish that balance, you need to, you know, obviously want to keep it right. Yeah. Um, it, it's really just like, before you give me the inputs, mix yourself a little bit, you know, spend a little time mixing what you're doing. And then it, it just makes my job so much easier. And then I can do things that are, I don't know, artistic, right? More, or, more nuanced. You know, yeah. Or I could pull off technical, like technical tricks that I wouldn't otherwise be able to do. Uh, because, you know, it, it, it makes compression a lot harder when you're compressing something, that something else is bleeding into that. Right. Um, yep. Yeah. So just, you know, as a musician, as a band, as a band member, focus on mixing, blending yourself in with the band. I mean, like, if you go to a jazz club, right there, there might not even be a pa no it you know? often guys, isn't right yeah right so the, the, those players have already focused a little bit on how they work together and how they blend together and uh you know if you're going in and mixing someone who's already done that it's so much easier yeah yeah you can i remember one gig we did with uh bitter pill which is a band i i play in a lot mm-hmm. and uh we're pretty there's two of us in the band who are are also like sound engineers so th- that helps and everybody in the band really has a sense of of that blend thing and we played an acoustic gig where i was just playing on a cajon and they put two mics out you know maybe five feet in front of where oh, we were wow. playing and that was it <laughs> yeah. and it sounded yeah. freaking amazing now it turns out that the the guy whose house we were at is also the chief designer for Earthworks microphones. So there was a lot of, hurt. yeah, it didn't hurt that we didn't know this until like we were halfway through the gate. It was like, what are these microphones and how do you know how to do this? We're in the middle of a field in the, you know, backwoods of New Hampshire. And he's like, oh yeah, my day job is Earthworks. It's like, oh, he's like, I designed these mics. Like, okay, well right. now, now I get it. Yeah. <laughs> but good job. High, high five to him. Bye. Yeah. High five to him. Right. Good exactly. Job, yeah. But he knew what he could do. And, because we were used to just blending as one, it makes a difference. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 